A group meeting, people seated on chairs in a circle, some with prosthetics or burn scars. My name is Lynn. Uh, Gina Patterson. Hi, my name's JJ Orsak. Um, I am Jen. I was burned when I was 25. Um, some people call me Dre. I was burned uh, when I was 20. Jeremy Brandon. <laughs> I was uh, born... <laughs> What am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Burn injuries can steal so much, but these survivors, their friends, and their partners are here to try and get something back. Cindy Rudder. I believe that everyone deserves a healthy, joyful sex life. There is a lot of joy and love around that, not just sex, but the intimacy as well. And so I'm not willing to give that up in my life, and I don't think anybody else should because of a burn injury. Sexuality and intimacy after burn injury. Cassandra De Paz sustained a burn injury in 2006. I was looking in the mirror, I was showing him my scars. I was like, man, you know, I think it would look cool if I got, you know, super buff or whatever. <laughs> I'd be like a buff zombie or something. Here in Dallas at the Burn Model System at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, the Burn Support Group is meeting to talk about sex and intimacy. But, you know, I'm joking about that, but Really, I mean, yeah, I was trying to increase my sexual value. You know, I wanted to be attractive to, to a woman. This group has been meeting monthly for years under the guidance of Dr. Radha Halavanahali. We need to normalize this. We need to talk about it. The sexuality and intimacy with burn injuries uh, have not been as um, openly discussed as it has been in many other injury populations. And I think there is a lot of fear and shame and awkwardness. There is so much of avoidance of this topic. And I think there is no reason to keep it that way. How many years did I spend? Sarah Connor. Um, depriving myself of the natural enjoyment of sexualities and orgasms and all the things that comes with it because I was afraid of what it looked like. Um, and I wish that we had talked about it. Dr. Karen Kowalski. Many of our burn survivors, sexuality is a core part of their being. It's as important as handwriting or driving or working. And it's critically important that we address it and do whatever we can to make sure that their return to sexuality is satisfactory. Dr. Karen Kowalski and Dr. Halavana Holly run the North Texas Burn Rehabilitation Model System. <laughs> It's one of four burn injury model system centers funded by the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research. These model system centers conduct research and provide innovative treatments for people with burn injury. With sexuality and intimacy, uh, they might be having a lot of challenges. Some uh, burn survivors need help to talk it through and find help. And some burn survivors need to actually go back to their doctors, their providers, or their therapists and find out what's actually uh, hindering them. J.J. Orsak. Okay, and I'm scheduled for my third surgery. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Dr. Stephen Wolf. There's a lot of uh, potential problems that people have uh, when you're talking about sexuality uh, after an injury. Here's surgeon Stephen Wolf. There's anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, psychology, and emotional, and emotional things, and all of that comes together. It sometimes takes a multidisciplinary team to help, and there can be an initial hurdle. The, the whole topic of sexuality and, and uh, intimacy is, is complex. And um, sometimes people are embarrassed uh, by the conversations. Uh, that's both with providers and patients. Exactly. What we right. hope right. to do is, is to give people permission. It's OK to talk about this. If we can break down this communication barrier, we really can resolve these problems for our, our burn survivors. That's true across all communities. It, it's true for the gay population, the straight population, trans. Physicians are very comfortable talking about medical problems. It can also be incredibly helpful to talk with other burn survivors who can offer strategies, validation, and hope. For years, I have kept thinking that I don't think I will be able to date again. I don't think I'll be able to sleep with any man again because I'm just afraid of my scar. And I'm just shut that line down without giving myself a chance or somebody else a chance to know me 
beyond my score. Cindy Rudder. So my burn injury is over 60 years, and um, I'm currently in a new relationship, and it was terrifying to um, express that my body is completely burned. Cindy Rudder is Dr. Halavana Holly's partner in this effort to get people talking about sex. She leads workshops all over the country. We can't have anybody else accept us until we accept ourselves, right? And we've got to accept and love our bodies the way they are. And our bodies are different. So you need to be forthcoming. Um, but there's that fear of, if I say it, are they still going to want to be with me? Right, that fear of rejection, which is huge. But I don't think our burns define us as human beings. And Sarah, your boyfriend, he obviously saw, I mean, I'm watching him glow when he looks at you. We talked for a lot before we met. Dustin Ross. We met, went on a couple dates, and she finally kind of told me about her burns. And, you know, for me, it was kind of like, oh, you know, it was intriguing more than anything because we had already built this great mm -hmm. you know relationship on all these interests we had and, and everything so you know it just kind of you know for me it didn't play that big of a factor I, you know i fell in love with her you know the scars are a secondary so i mean i'm going through almost nine years lan huang well i would say almost nine years without sex and then I determined, it's like, well, I'm missing something. <laughs> I think I'm missing something. And anyway, I just start dating again. Hey. Yes. Hey. <laughs> yes. And he would freak out for he saw my scar. He did freak out. Um, he's just like, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> you know, I told him, it was like, it's a lot. But it's like, wow, it's a lot. Yes, it took him a few days to process. Honestly, he did share that part. And I was crying, I was in tears that he overcome that and he come back to me and he's like, but I'm interesting, I want to check you out more. So <laughs> more. <laughs> you had more Experts say that there are some people who don't want to have sex or need to have sex, and that's okay too. In the early stages after a burn, it's certainly normal for sex to not be on anyone's mind. Juan and Ariel were in a new relationship when his accident happened. I was worried, you know, what is she going to think? Juan Martinez. Because, uh, I mean, when, when I woke up from my coma, I, I seen her. I was surprised to actually see her. You know, to me, I thought she was going to leave me behind and everything. And I was surprised she was there. Ariel Salto, holding just, an infant. I did everything I could to make him feel better. If I, I, I wasn't shy about touching him if the parts that I could, you know. And of course, if it was causing him pain, I wasn't going to touch him there. But I pretty much just waited for him. So when it came time, you know, I, I, I didn't want to mention it uh, first. I didn't want to mention it because one of the things was I was on medication too, so I, I kind of had trouble getting aroused. Physiologic I mean, components can include uh, side effects from medications. So antidepressant medications specifically can interfere both with sexual desire and sexual performance. We want to try to find a medication that doesn't have side effects for an individual so that they can enjoy normal sexual activity and function. At first it was hard because, I mean, I have H.O. on both of my arms, so I, I couldn't gra gra grab her around, hug her and stuff like that. And the, the positions we were, we were trying to do it, uh, it was difficult, man. I mean, first uh, I pretty much had to lay down there like a stick and she was doing all that work for the first year. <laughs> <laughs> In spite of the issues with medication and the scarring limiting Juan's arm movements, they just had their second baby. But one thing that we had always had was communication. I mean, I think that's really, really the, the main thing. You, know, you, you got to talk to to your partner. So update me on how things are going. So far, so good. So just switched jobs. Jennifer Bell Matthews was burned in a house fire in 2010. Her recovery was challenging and she credits Dr. Kowalski with saving her life. As they're catching up, Dr. Kowalski makes sure to ask specifically about sex to give Jennifer an opening to talk about it, if she'd like to. So tell me how things are going. Are, are there issues with sex or intimacy or creating a relationship? Just with the double mastectomy issue, um, that was really rough for me, trying to get back into how do you feel sexy 
what do you tell the other person when you're trying to get intimate and you're like, whoa, I don't have any boobs. Do you tell them six months ahead of time? Do you tell them right before so they can't back out? So it's very important for the professionals to initiate this conversation because it kind of wipes away the fear on the patient's part. The survivor and the families, they are concerned about it, but they may be kind of nervous to bring it up and they might also think that this is not appropriate, but it helps in the recovery process to go through all the facets of one's life that can affect one's quality of life. For him, it was a mindset thing. We've become more intimate than anything, and we've always been touchy-feely. And uh, Sharon Orsak's husband, JJ, was burned only a year ago, so the feelings are still very raw for her. I uh, was working in a aerial lift, replacing parking lot lighting. JJ Orsak. Accidentally got into a 7,000 volt high line and lived through it, but uh, am paying the cost. Walking their dog. The burns put JJ in the hospital for two and a half months. He was burned across his torso and pelvic area, and he lost both of his arms. Sharon Orsak. The thing I guess I miss the most is holding his hand. And he used to love running his fingers through my hair, and I miss that, too. Playing a table game. A year later, J.J. has made a remarkable recovery in many ways, and he and Sharon are hopeful that a third surgery will help with genital scarring. For now, they're trying to negotiate an intimate life together without intercourse. To get some advice about that, they'll be visiting with occupational therapist Ashley Overturf. We look at sexual activity as kind of a, a function of daily life. It may not be the most important part of our daily life, but it's definitely something that Ashley um, over turf. is important in its right moments. Before, because mm -hmm. most couples have a have a sort of a pattern of how they engage sexually, um, and so kind of broadening your horizon and saying like that might not be possible, but there are other ways, right? And it may be that. Um, Sexual intercourse itself is not an option at this point, but other forms of sexual interaction are. Just to play a little bit in the shower. Yeah, you know. good, good. So I think those kind of moments, like creating that romance, <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> creating that romance is really important, right? So the, the ability to sort of venture out and say like, this might seem a little weird <laughs> or a little different than what we're used to, but let's try this, right? A lot of times it's a change in how you position yourselves. And I think that's one thing that a therapist can, can really help with. One of the emotional challenges that a lot of couples have to deal with is the change in roles. Karen gives JJ a sip from a water bottle. My partner is my caregiver now. I don't feel that sexual connection anymore. I've lost the desire. But I think through small ways of keeping that intimacy intact, even as they're receiving treatment, would go a long way in their relationship. Sometimes even just gazing into each other's eyes. Just the smile. That is such a good feeling, you know, when you show that connection to that other person. It helps in their recovery, too. And for both, they both feel good emotionally, and so you feel that you're in it together. JJ with his dog. JJ's affectionate nature made this easier for the Orsacs than it might be for some couples. Our connection was still there um, once he did come out of his um, drug-induced coma. When I walked into the room, he kind of picked his head up out of the bed and puckered up his lips. <laughs> And I was like, oh, baby. And that intimacy has meant the world to both of them. It makes me comfortable and secure that my wife is okay with my new body, my new limitations, and all my scars, that she, she still loves me for me. The intercourse part of it will come one day. And if it doesn't, then I'm fine with that because that's not why I love him, you know. I love him because he's, because of you. Thank you so much for sharing your story. It was very intense and emotional. It takes a lot of courage, but it's so heartwarming to see you both so intimately involved with each other. Yeah. 
At home, JJ and Sharon hug and kiss. Cindy Rudder. I think it's important for burn survivors to think about the trauma that they have been through and the tragedy of their event and that their life can still be um, an incredible living experience. And why have an additional tragedy and not enjoying a life filled with sexuality and intimacy? Jennifer Bell Matthews texts, you don't even understand how much I appreciate you. A response, you make me feel a certain way and I love that. Do I? Sideways smile emojis. Hmm, really? I definitely believe that I deserve a great life that is full of happiness and joy. I feel that I deserve a life that is full of great intimacy and, of course, great sex. Uh, for the last probably seven years, I've had a fortress built around myself. And um, I met a man. I had forgotten, to be quite honest, what a joyous feeling it is to be in a relationship and to be alive again. And this has brought, um, again, immeasurable joy and healing to my life. Ariel cradles her infant. Juan smiles nearby. Several others hug. <laughs> JJ and Sharon kiss and rub noses. Burn Injury Model Systems Centers provide coordinated and multidisciplinary care and conduct research to improve care and outcomes for people with burn injury. MSKTC.org. This video is a product of the Model Systems Knowledge Translation Center in collaboration with the North Texas Burn Rehabilitation Model System, funded by the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research. To learn more about the work of the Burn Injury Model System Centers, please visit msktc.org. Visit www.msktc.org for the entire Hot Topic module, Sexuality and Intimacy After Burn Injury. Producer Christian Lindstrom, camera Russell Blair, audio Michael Shepard, narrator David Ginder. We'd like to offer our sincere appreciation to Jennifer Bell Matthews, Sarah Connor and Dustin Ross, Lissandra De Paz, Scott and Barbara Denman, Lon Huang, Lisa Johnson, Juan Martinez and Ariel Salto, Jeremy Orozco, Sharon and JJ Orsak, Gina Patterson, and Cindy Rudder for allowing us to share their stories. The contents of this video were developed under a grant from the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research, NIDILRR Grant 90DP0082. NIDILRR is a center within the Administration for Community Living, ACL, Department of Health and Human Services, HHS. The contents of this video do not necessarily represent the policy of NIDILRR, ACL, HHS, and you should not assume endorsement by the federal government.